This video is sponsored by Skillshare Online Learning Community because I'm not a carpenter and I don't play one on TV. Hi guys, welcome back. Now, if you've been following my channel for a while, you probably will have figured out I have a slight pencil addiction and I do a lot of collecting. If you ask my husband, it's not slight. I need spaces to put these pencils. I'm going to build a small cabinet for my pencils and before you start saying you have no woodworking skills, neither do I. I made it through my high school woodworking class because my father was friends with the teacher and the teacher said they'd give me an A if I didn't cut the wood. So this project that I'm going to do has been inspired by this. Now, if you were smart, you would just go out and get this for your pencils, but I'm not smart. I'm going to build a small cabinet to put my pencils in. To begin with, we're going to use a wooden wine box. Now, where do you get these? Any liquor store has them. In fact, a liquor store near me, they sell them to the public for $5. That's not a very big investment into a handmade cabinet. They come in all different condition, try to pick out the best quality. The wood is not always the best, so you may have to sand it and clean it up a little bit, and that just a little bit of sandpaper and a little bit of hard work. If the joints aren't completely sealed or shut and you want to make it look a little nicer, a little joint compound wood filler works perfectly well because you're going to paint over this. This one happens to be rather large. I have a choice which direction I want to keep it. Now I can make it long or I can make it tall. For my purposes today, I'm going to make it tall. It sometimes comes with like some staples. You could see it at the top. I have to clean this up. I'm going to sand this down. I'm going to clean it up and then I'm going to spray paint it white. So the next time you see this, it's going to look a lot better. I'm sorry if it's a bit windy. I have the box painted. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to add a paint treatment to it. And then you're going to get these sticks. They sell them in like Hobby Lobby and this one is three eighths by three eighths, and you're going to measure how deep it is for the number of drawers. You're going to need four. I'm going to cut it at that length. You're going to need four per drawer. So on this, I'm going to do one, two, two drawers on top, and you're going to measure how deep. So I'm going to need eight sticks. I'm outside now. I'm going to be doing two different painting techniques on this. This is going to cover up all my floors. What I have is some water and I'm going to spray water all over the back of the box. And I'm going to wait until the water droplets get pretty large. Now I'm going to go down to my vision is looking towards the side and I've got a can of black spray paint. What I want to do is I want to shoot from one side the water droplets just like that. Okay, so the paint is on the water droplets. The white, which I'm running out of, I really hope I have enough. Going to the opposite side, and I'm gonna spray. Okay, so that it looks like this. Now I just have to wait for it to dry. Just give it a little bit more black. Okay, that's perfect. And we're going to let it dry. This is going to be drying for hours because not only does the paint have to dry, but the water has to evaporate. Usually I do this technique in the summer when it's like 100 degrees. It looks like it's going to come out really good. When this side is dry, I'm going to do all the other sides the same I exact want to thank way. Thank our sponsor for today's video, and that's Skillshare. 
Skillshare is an online learning community where millions of people come together to make the next step in their artistic journey. There are thousands of classes that you can choose from in topics such as fine arts, creative writing, graphic design, photography, and more. Most classes are under 60 minutes with a short lesson that fits any schedule. And if you decide to sign up with Skillshare, it's under $10 a month. The first 1,000 people who click the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Skillshare Premium. If you want to learn more about spray paint art, there's an instructor, John Olson, that runs a class on just spray paint art. And you can find that right in Skillshare. Here is the painting technique all dry. I love the finish it gets. It's just like funky and cool. And if you want, you can do this in any color. You just use white and whatever color. I like the black and white, but it comes out just as cool with other colors, or maybe you could put a rainbow of colors. For the shelves, I wanted something a little bit different because the outside of the box is all cells. That's what the pore paint people call those little dots and swirls that you get. Well, since it was completely done in cells, I wanted something different for the insides. I mixed some pouring medium into 50% paint, and then I just poured the paint out onto the shelves. Where it landed was where it stayed, and I really liked the effect. Kind of looks like a marbling. I've got some tricky angles in here, so please excuse if this moves around a lot. Now that I have it all painted, I glued in some of the sticks on the side after measuring to create the shelf. Now this one will will pull out. I don't want to do it now because it was just glued. This one will pull out because I don't have this glued in. The rest I'm gonna I decided I was gonna glue in. Then I, if you could see up here, I drilled a hole in the back and I strung some LED light. It was very easy. It's basically you just put it together and string it. So I have one more to glue down and it's marked over here. And I'm gonna glue it down now. I ended up putting the two sticks just because they it was a little bit more stable. And these are glued in, not um, slidable. You could make it slidable by not gluing in the board, but I'm not really gonna pull this out. So I decided to put it in. Um, the top one up here, I'll be able to slide in and out because I'm going to want to get to the lights. So here it is all put together. And now I have to do is fill it. I did put a hook over here. And the way I glued in this, I have a little notch over here so that it clips it in right there. Perfect. I'm always losing my scissor. So now the only thing left is I'm going to fill it. And I bought these things off of Amazon. They're great. And they sell them in threes or two packs. I bought a two pack. And they fit right on the shelf. And I have all sorts of goodies in it. Here's my fine liners, my Posca, my whites and black pencils. I've got my Copics that I use all the time for shadow. Um, some drawing pencils. So that fit perfect. Then I have my current white pencil well actually this is gonna go in over here and that's um measures th this is a measuring device that i use to measure cores and my comb i've got a comb sharpener which i'm finding i'm using as much as i am the uh, electric pencil sharpener that thing gives a really sharp point I could do really great details with it. Then I have this tray. I've had it for a long time. Then I have a magnetized tray. 
and th it fit all my erasers in it. I have all different types of erasers. And then I'm going to put on the top shelf. And then I have some assorted other erasers that I use. These are hard erasers. I got them from Andy. They're really good for stubborn stains. I own some, like the Prismacolor one. But I tried his out just because I was curious and it was, you know, really good. So now I have a bunch of them. I have putty eraser right there and my electric eraser, which I'm always touching and turning on. Somebody else said that about it. They're always turning on the eraser. And I have more from Andy eraser. So this is going to be my entire eraser shelf. More from Mandy. And then I have one of these I use for erasing in eyes. Or maybe this is an off brand. Tombow. Tombow eraser. Then from the dollar store, I bought some trays with just a couple of other knickknacks in there that I need. My color wheels. And it even has a little bit of extra room on the side, which always comes in handy. And I have one for the bottom. My whole binds go right here. It fits perfectly. I've got I've got a sketchbook which goes right in here. Slides right in. So that fits perfectly. I have to remember to get a replacement because I go through those there a lot. I've got an X-Acto knife blade in. Well, I did have more stuff. But here's my magnifying glasses go right over here. And this is pretty much filled. My pencil. So that's filled and I still have a ton of room to put things. I could hang another hook in the back and hang things up as I need it. I mean, the sky's the limit, whatever you could think of. So this is my box. I'm going to show it to you in action turned on in just a minute. So here it is all lit up. And I did add one other thing. On the side these are pen holders I'll leave the link in the description because it's kind of hard to find them I added those in so that I can hang my phone cable through it and what's really nice is it tucks back really easy and then I can pull it out to attach it to my camera if I need to film with the jack in and the most important thing to have in your art room, which was perfect, is I put a little hook up there and I attached my back scratcher. You live in the desert, you need to own a back scratcher because <laughs> it's so dry here. This is the newest addition to my art room and I will see you guys in my next video. If you have any questions, let me know. Bye-bye.